Where I live is usually called the Sunshine State, but today there's a cyclone going on outside, so it's called the uh, Wet State. And what better to do than overclock three Ryzen R7 CPUs? Because that's what I'd be doing anyway, regardless of the weather. Welcome back guys, and today I'm going to be overclocking three different Ryzen CPUs, two of which were review samples, that being the R7-1700X and also the R7-1800X, and then comparing that against my retail sample, the R7-1700. Now Paul's Hardware already did a very similar video to this, which is a really good video, so if you haven't checked it out already, then I'll put the link in the description below for you guys. But basically he said the R7-1700 was the best value out of the lot, since it's got relatively close to his other two R7 CPUs use in terms of maximum overclocks. And today I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion and what I've done with my CPUs and how they overclock. So let's get into the first CPU. So the CPU I was most curious about was the R7-1700, since it comes in at $330 and also includes a cooler. Now I also recently tested this a couple of videos ago on a B350 motherboard that I got for like $80 US dollars. Extremely cheap and it performed really well. It got to 3.85 GHz on all cores with the stock cooler. Though I wanted to see how further it would go with a much better cooling solution and also a better motherboard. So today I'm using a EK Predator 240 and also my ASRock Tai Chi motherboard to see how high this CPU can go. And when I started overclocking it, I found that the maximum overclock I could get out of this CPU was about 4 gigahertz on all cores. I could boot into a little bit higher with say 4.05 gigahertz, but it would just shut down. And even with the over voltage and over current protection switched off, it just wouldn't go any higher. However, 4 gigahertz for the price I paid for this thing was absolutely phenomenal, especially on all cores. So the next CPU I've got in the lineup here is the R7-1700X. It comes in a little bit more expensive than the R7-1700. However, it doesn't include a cooler, but it does come with a thing called XFR technology, where if you put a cooling solution on, it will boost the CPU automatically. Now I found on the Tai Chi motherboard, this really only worked for single or dual core applications or when the threads are loaded up dynamically. It wasn't working when all the cores are loaded up. I found in Cinebench and also in games that loaded up a lot of threads, it would only load up to 3.5 gigahertz maximum. Though it did report 3.9 gigahertz on single cores when I was doing single threaded tests, which was exactly where my main overclock was sitting on this CPU. And I managed to get it to 3.9 gigahertz at 1.36125 volt. And this was the lowest of all the overclocks I've seen here, though keep in mind it was 100 megahertz lower than the R7-1700 and also the next CPU that we're going to look at. So now the last CPU here is the R7-1800X. Now this comes in around $500. It also doesn't come with a cooler and it also has the support for XFR technology. And putting that to the test, I found it boosted up to 4.1 gigahertz, so 200 megahertz higher on XFR than the R7-1700X. However, on all cores, it only managed to go to 3.7 gigahertz. However, I shouldn't be saying only, that's actually pretty good considering you don't have to do anything at all. Though if I wanted to overclock this CPU, which I did, I managed to get it to 4.025 gigahertz on all cores. So nothing really changed and I was using the latest BIOS here. Now this managed to hit these speeds at 1.3975 volt, stable. And also an interesting thing is when I ran all these CPUs on stress tests, they all leveled out at around the same temperatures. I was using just the latest version of Hardware Monitor, which does report the CPU temperatures pretty accurately, I'd say. It's saying that it was maxing out at around 54 degrees maximum on all three different tests at around similar voltages. Though, let's talk about the winner here. And in my opinion, the R7-1700 comes far ahead of the other two with it being just simply awesome value for money. It clocked 100 megahertz higher than my R7-1700X. It was only 25 megahertz below the R7-1800X, and it did that with almost using 20 millivolts less. So it was uh, clocking in at 1.375 volt versus 1.3975 volt on the 1800X. So it did clock in lower, it will use a little bit less power, and it will get similar overclocks to an R7-1800X. And you also get an included cooler. So if you guys are into manually overclocking your CPUs, then you'll definitely want to get an R7-1700, save some cash, and just have an awesome time on the Ryzen lineup. 
Though, what about the 1700X and also the 1800X? Well, they do have their places, of course, if you guys don't want to do any overclocking at all. And I know some people out there that just go to work, they want to not worry about entering a BIOS or having any issues or any troubles with their computers. They just want to get the best performance out of the box. Well, that's when the 1700X and also the 1800X come into play. The 1800X obviously being about 200 megahertz higher in its maximum frequencies than the 1700X out of the box. So if you just want to get that easy to use, really good rise in performance, then you can get that with the 1800X. And you guys are probably lastly wondering about the memory overclocks and Ryzen. Well, I've tested now three different CPUs across three different motherboards, and the maximum I can get my memory to at the moment is 2933 megahertz on a cold boot. Now, as some more updates flow through on the BIOS, we may be able to get more higher memory speeds, uh, but I do believe that 1T command rate timing is holding us back unless you have some really good memory. However, keeping that in mind, the performance with a 1080 Ti is just simply phenomenal at the moment with these CPUs. And I will be, now that my rig's running really smooth, I will be retesting it against the 7700K at a few different resolutions to give you guys just a re-update with that video because I believe some of these performance updates are flowing through now and the Ryzen is running near its best. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below which is your favorite pick out of the R7 lineup. Me personally, man, that R7 1700, it just can't be beat. I absolutely love the price performance it's bringing to the market at the moment. Uh, but would love to hear your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Well, it's usually called the sunshine. Uh, sunshine. Uh, yeah.